What's up, YouTube nights? Welcome to Lords of Lumbox presents the cover price comic book shakers of the week. You know what time it is. You know, this is the offer list, but I think I think uh, a few people, I think there's one or two that are on there that are easy, but uh, some other yeah. ones, whoa, whoa. As you know, customarily, <coughs> oh, geez, excuse me, for Freestyle Friday, got to play freestyle, right? There you go. All right. Apparatus is here. When I rock a rhyme, often eyes are dropping a tear. It's so beautiful, it's America's landscapes when this man makes lyrics like the syrups that you pour upon your pancakes. My mandate is to grip minds like a handshake. Spit a Lando Lakes and go skinny dip with the fan base. Over any damn breakbeat, I hastily make pastries tastier than anything that Wolfgang makes. So take notes out of suckers, I make coats, lump a sum like Bubba Gump fishing on lake boats. I take jokes and turn the comedy into drama. I'm bagging on your mama. I'm Jeffrey Dahmer behind ya. I'm a rhyme writer. Lock, stock, smoking the ganja. Rebuttals, befuddle, leaving a puddle of saliva, sillies. You couldn't handle Randall when I throw my grammar at you. It hit your head and you would think I threw a hammer at you. I point the camera at you like Herb Ritz. Develop it, then use the pictures to pick up bird shits. You're nervous is the impervious wordsmiths. Hanging out in Rafa's new crib come with the verses. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't be a shaky show without Randall Park freestyle. No, I just no. watched a movie with him last night too, and it reminded me of that too. And I was like, "Oh my goodness, forgot what it was." Was uh, I think I was watching Three Problem something? Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem. I think that was it. Was he in there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, this is a new record of. Uh, that we're setting right now. So, <laughs> the earliest uh, invocation. I love, I love it, man. <laughs> you got to peep out through your body problem, man. It is some trippy <laughs> sci-fi stuff. Yeah. Um, and if you want to delve deeper into it, look into the backstory. 
So the guy who um, brought basically he, he he was a big fan of the novel, right? This Chinese guy. And so he helped usher it into Netflix and uh, he was killed by somebody. And I'll just leave it at that. It's it's really crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's really it interesting, crazy. though. Really interesting. Yeah. Speaking of crazy, Marty, say what's good to people. What's good, peoples? And welcome to the show, as always. Thank you for joining us live. Thank you for joining us on the Rewind. We hope you guys enjoy our show tonight. We're going to do our best to not bingling, dingle dangle, Ooh, uh, whatever you want to say it. So, but uh, we're going to try. We're going to try. All right. All right, JB. Yeah, welcome to the show, everybody. Um, this is not the Ofer list. There might be one, uh, one or two on here that you may have. But you know what this list is? It is chock full of some fantastic writing from the amazing writers writers over at Cover Price. By the way, if you oh. do not have a subscription to Cover Price, what the hell are you doing, man? For less than the price of a McRib, that's on your bingo wow. card. Wow. So we yeah. have drop a bingo J- card all kind JB of. pandering. <laughs> Uh, Pandering to the audience, bingo, uh, yeah, bingo, wild, bingo! Man. Yeah, Look wild, at that. Wild. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the, show, the show is brought to, uh, brought to our friends at uh, Cover Price, uh, focusing on new sales or interesting sales found on their exclusive day, uh, daily shakers list. This just changes several times every day, so make sure you check it out to read some of uh, the hottest trending books. After we go through these ten, we're gonna go onto the website and see what's shaking today, boy. Boys and girls. Also, our good friends at Bird City Comics, sponsored by uh, them, are uh, sponsored by Bird City Comics. <laughs> Use discount code of LOTLB to get a fifteen percent off in the Bird City Comics store. Miss Laura couldn't be here, but you know what? She's always uh, going to be here in heart, right? You know, because uh, oh, I think it's... she's she's busy with work. So, but she wanted me to tell you guys something. Come to me. I've been waiting. Oh my God! We're yeah. clipping that. No, we're not. <laughs> it never it, gets it, old, it, man. It, Come on. It, it, it. All right, man. Let's get right to it. So, uh, this is the Shakers for April eleventh. Uh, uh, what do we got up first? I think this is a chance to get on the board. Yeah, this is a chance to get on the board. You know what? We're going to do something different. Okay. I don't think we've ever done this before. There is some very impressive knowledge that's about to get dropped in this read, and I'm going to ask the chat because we've got one of the best chats in YouTube. Here's a little trivia. What comic book holds the record with the most printings? The answer coming up. All right. To kick off tonight's list, we've got Shaker number one, Batman, The Killing Joke, issue number one, originally published in 1988. Now, we avoid discussing books that have sold over a thousand copies and don't normally cover graphic novels either, but. We prefer to focus on finding those rare, hard-to-find gems rather than dwell into the less common fare. However, when it comes to The Killing Joke, there is no denying that this is one of history's most talked about, second only to the legendary Watchmen, of course. But what sets it apart from the rest? Well, for starters, this book received an astounding 10.0 grade from CGC, not once, but an astounding 14 times. Damn! It features, <laughs> it features <laughs> include a thicker grams per square inch meter cover but this should be a minor factor when considering the impressive number of top-notch grades for one book. Additionally, this novel has an astounding, ready, 14 printings, which is not far behind the possible record holder. Did anybody get the record holder for the most printings? Because here it is. Johnny, the homicidal maniac, with a record 26 printings. Oh, shit. Now, I would have never there has that. been... I've never even heard of it, right? Now, there has been some debate over CGC's new trend of giving more 9.9s and 10.0 grades. Some speculate that the company is trying to appease users affected by recent scandals and increased competition. However, 
it is worth noting that although this particular book was recently graded with other previous 13 slabs uh, may outweigh this speculated trend. Man, that's a horrible sentence. Thus, the current all-time high of 20... Dude, what the hell? The current all-time high of $28,800 for this CGC 10.0 is a remarkable feat on its own. Pay him. Pay that man his money. I was Along just going to play that too. While you I would die like guy beat you to it. Along God, with the intense controversy, this comic has stirred, particularly Batgirl's brutality <clears> and this <throat> extraordinary sale. It's safe to say that the killing joke will solidify its place in the comic book community for years to come. So Batman, the killing joke, number one from uh, 1988, which was uh, groundbreaking at its time. Um, and, if you open this book, it automatically drops a grade because <laughs> you know yeah, how to read right. the square it's a, bound. It's, yeah, it, it's got that cardstock cover. Uh, Hard. I'm yeah, about yeah. to resubmit my 9.8 up here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Come on, yeah. man! Look at that money. Twenty. The only way yeah, I can think out. you can get a 10.0 is if uh, they never opened it at all. It just comes it, right out of the the. Press. See, I'll tell you what: the 9.8 up there looks straight, absolutely straight to the hands perfect. of. The I don't even understand why it's a 9.8. It's just dead perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeez, sorry, guys. Was, hold on. Yeah. Let, I know. Let, hold on. Let me mute this for a second. Who let the dogs out? All right. <laughs> so, uh, Batman the Killing Joke, issue number one, 1988. Highest known value $28,800. Wow. People are spending some money. All right. What do we have up next? Your turn, Marty. <laughs> Yes, my turn. I apologize for the uh, the In background there. noise. Yeah, that was um, it. it's the door. So um, <laughs> we're good. Anyway, life number two. I, I, that you, you got to admit, I've got a pretty life damn happens, good alarm man. system we're, here. We're on right? live TV. Do it yeah. live, Marty. Come on. Do it live. Here we go. Shaker number two brings you Boys Club number one, published by Tim Goodyear in. 2006 by Nick Richardson. Okay. We've highlighted this book several times over the years, including on a market report last year when it hit a new all time high sale. Well, that sale has been obliterated, <laughs> obliterated. Oh, recently. Yeah. I know. I know. Getting close. You're getting close. I know. I'm, I was getting close. Obliter obliterated. Recently, a CGC 9.6 copy sold for an impressive $2,999, a massive $900 jump over the all-time high sale of $2,100 for a CGC 9.8. However, comma, not much has changed since the last write-up. The Pepe cryptocurrency is still relevant. Although it's been dropped in value considerably, people still consider Pepe to be a mascot of hate. But the character has grown as well. Oftentimes, when the creator of something such as Pepe has been a hot button subject to create something new, people take notice. They explore past work, which will lead fans of Matt Furry back to this book. Recently, Furry completed a Kickstarter campaign for a board game under the Save Pepe banner, which he utilized to claw back the character from hate groups. Updates were provided on the webpage, which naturally led some down a rabbit hole. One fan went back to the beginning and paid top dollar to snag a copy of that book that cemented Pepe as a member of the pop culture lexicon boys club issue number one from uh, <clears throat> 2006 three grand and 9.6 uh i did not know this was pepe the frog's first appearance i meant if you don't know what it is it started as a meme then it started going into dark areas and then it was just like it was uh, you know i, I want to say like 
part of like comics gate and all these other weird things and people are using it uh 4chan uh anon i mean it was it was it it was just weird i didn't i didn't understand it but uh yeah okay. there you go i you know, never i don't never heard it, of even it. after I, you explain yeah. it <laughs> you never you, you never seen it the pepper the fog uh meme no yeah no no yeah all right man what do we got next <clears throat> All right. Remember, folks, these uh, this list is in alphabetical order. Next up, we've got G.I. Joe America's Elite. Issue number one, the Nelson Blake and Reese York Graham Crackers Platinum cover originally published in 2005 from Devil's Due Publishing. Now, what sets the G.I. G- what sets this? Sorry. What sets this? G.I. Joe issue apart from its counterparts is its limited availability and exclusive Graham Cracker Comics variant cover crafted by the talented duo of Nelson Blake and Reese York, capitalizing on the Captain America punching Hitler homage. With only three recorded sales to date, this edition stands as a rare gem in the annals of G.I. Joe collectibles. The latest recorded sale, a near mint raw copy, commanded a remarkable price of a hundred bucks, signaling a significant appreciation in value since its original release. In contrast, the previous two recorded sales also raw near mint copies at the <laughs> modest 14 to 15 bucks. Interestingly, this book only appears in the aftermarket every two years as each of these sales is spaced out evenly. Hmm, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. The Graham Cracker cover typically sells for significantly less than the one in 10 variant, even though it's just as rare with It's intriguing storyline, dynamic artwork, and limited availability. This comic represents a must-have addition to any G.I. Joe enthusiast's collection. And no one is half the battle. G.I. Joe's Elite Issue Number 1. I'm not going to read the rest. That's a lot of reading. (laughs) Raw (laughs) Dog. a lot of reading. Yeah, man. man. Raw Dog, 100 Bones. Uh, Yeah, remember... been some graham cracker variants that have been on the shaker show mm. you know it's it's just a kind of an, an oddity really i mean kind of cool you know but you know who would think of graham crackers and comics but then again there's other crazier things you're thinking of all right what do you have, have next this disclaimer there you go oh oh yes number four shaker brings oh. you grendel number one published by comico in 1983 by nick richardson Many recognize Grendel from his first appearance in Primer Number 2, a difficult and expensive book to acquire. When that grows out of reach for the average collector, many have opted to pivot to this issue. It features the second appearance of Grendel and the origin story, as well as the premiere issue of his first miniseries. Recently, a CGC 9.8 and one of the 15 copies on the census hit the market and sold for $1,020, the highest sale in our database. For comparison, CGC 9.6 copies last sold for $523 in the late 2023. It's a solid early Grendel key to acquire. Considering a CGC 9.8 of primer number two can run upwards of 6K. It also checks the majority of boxes for collectors, being an early key, part of a severely limited, severely limited print Uh-oh. run. Oh, uh, getting close. Thanks. Yeah. See, I went back. You, you like? I was like, hmm. limited print run. Thanks to the insolvency of Comico and a black and white title. It also has more options as near mint raw copies can typically be had for under $175 if you can find them. Grendel has a storied history and is a beloved character that flies under the radar. Now, a lucky collector has an awesome key 
to add to the personal collection? Yeah, so um, I, I, I could have sworn there was a Grendel movie in live action. Um, uh, Grendel is actually a mythological uh, yes. creature in the in the poem. Uh, I think uh, was there it there was is it, yeah Beowulf. Yeah, so, uh, matter of yeah. fact, there was, and and I think they did mainly in the the Viking Hall. Remember that? I think it was filmed yeah. in the Viking Hall. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, Grendel. I mean. The early '80s was was right in the was right in the cusp of just strange, cool independent comics. You know what I mean? Like you're thinking of the Tick, TMNT, oh. Radio the Black Band, Hamsters. Uh, you know, mm. go on and on. It was it was it was the high of like indie comics. Um, and then the '90s took over, and it was just like you know you know boobs, ass, and Variants, yeah. and blah, 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 you know, you know, what I'm saying so, naughty covers and this and that, yeah, yeah. But uh, speaking of naughty covers, segue, segue. Oh, this is sweet. All right, next up at number five, we've got Marvel preview issue number seven, originally published in 1976. Man, oh man, that's the Bronze Age. How this unique raccoon evaded comic book hunters from all corners of the cosmos is up for debate. Still, it's worth noting that the first appearance of this curious creature in print set a new record-breaking sale of $15,600 for a CGC 9.8. Damn! I just did it. I thought you had it queued up. <laughs> I did it myself. <laughs> I see. However, before reaching any conclusions, let's look at the evidence closer. Do you remember Incredible Hulk issue number 271? Hmm, I do. How can this comic also be considered Rocket Raccoon's first appearance? Well, it's important to note that Marvel previews, unlike traditional comic books, were published as a magazine with larger, more fragile pages. Additionally, Rocky Raccoon, instead of the later named Rocket Raccoon, was, uh, his introduction was only a subtle hint at a future character and not an active participant in the story, as in Hulk 271. Therefore, Marvel preview number seven could be considered the first appearance of Rocket Raccoon in a magazine to avoid confusion and settle the argument definitely. On the other hand, the debate surrounding a character's first appearance has impacted many over the years. Either way, it's up to the collector to deem what's considered the first, forming their own ideological and historical historical credibility based on the parameters they set individually. Good Lord, I want to read that one again. It's up to the collector to deem what's considered first, forming their own ideological and historical credibility based on the parameters they set individually. Let's go rock it. Well, well done. A good read, but uh, no, there's no argument. This is his first appearance. No, really? Yeah. I don't care this if it's a magazine a or I don't this care if it's a magazine, magazine or a comic. It's his first appearance. And that's, you know, uh, 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 all right. Yeah. People with FOMO get that Hulk issue. And then, you know, so there I said it. I said it. <laughs> but what's another example my of a dead first appearance in a magazine over a comic and which one sells better? Like, um, I don't like it. Boba Fett, right? Isn't that yeah, well, the, the one that appears are in the magazine more, first? The magazines are more scarce. Uh, first of all, right? So, and obviously the magazine format, so it's the grading too, but yeah, I mean, plus, look, is would that be considered a blonde with a red, not, not red dress, but but a red outfit? Yeah. I just, I, I love this. One. Like, I, you guys have, I've, I've always said this. I love these magazines, Marvel preview, all these anthologies where they, you know, they could do 
different storytelling, you know, like uh, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu and all this crazy stuff where you're reading it and then there's a like there's an ad to buy nunchucks and shit like that. And you, ah, yeah. you know, in the <laughs> 70s, man, they were really good about having like these very beautiful covers like this, man. You, you see them everywhere. Like you saw them in Conan the Barbarian, Savage Sword of Conan, um, Vampirella, a creepy, eerie uh, uh, magazines. All those magazines had such great artists as like Boris Vallejo, um, Frank Frazetta, you know, some some of those wonderful old school artists. Yeah, man. Is this also the first appearance of Zatanna or just in this magazine series? Satana. 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 Sorry. Yeah, it is. I think. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, Star Lord's another man. A lot of great examples in the chat. The chat is on yes, fire. Yes, Star Lord is. Shout out that. to the chat. Uh, yeah, I remember when these were hot when the Guardians movie came out, and people were getting you know that one with the with the cover of Star Lord on 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 it. The I forgot what it was called. I had it too. God, I had I Star had Lord. Too. That's another one. Yeah. All right, uh, Marvel preview issue number seven, 1976. 9.8 for fifteen grand, dude. Fifteen grand. Wow. You could buy a used. <laughs> Honda, I can pay off, I can pay off some cards like that. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm <laughs> guys are pretty pricey nowadays, but you know, you can put down this down payment right there. Boom! All right, this one's pretty cool. Yeah, not a bad cover. Number six, Shaker brings you Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty issue number one, cover RI CGI, published by IDW in October 1 of 2005. Wow, that was a mouthful right there. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid is one of the most iconic video game franchises of all time. It combines cinematic cuts, sense, and boundary pushing gameplay. The characters were well realized, and the game had five main title releases. The visionary creator, Hideo Koji, Kojima, is primarily responsible for making a relatively obscure NES title into the Goliath it is today. Video game films have recently seen a lot of success, having conquered the long-running video game movie curse. Super Mario Brother, The Last of Us, and Fallout are all signs that this subgenre has a lot of death and breath. Metal Gear Solid has been rumored for years to have been optioned, written, or produced, but so far nothing has come of it. Mm -hmm. Oscar Isaac was at one point attached. Oscar Isaac. Isaac. Oscar Isaac was at one point attached to Star for in the movie. <laughs> in 2005, the relatively new IDW secured the rights to make a comic book adaptation of Metal Gear Solid and its sequel, Metal Gear Solid 2. The Sons of Liberty issues were released nearly four years ago after the video game. Even though these were not original stories, these books were hard to find even at the time of printing due to a low print run. Further, the C, CGI, and the D, Brown Ashley Wood covers were never available on store shelves. They were only available on the IDW website. They feature the unique art of Ashley Wood, whose art style have come to be a synonymous with the franchise. The CGC cover is taken directly from the game, Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, itself and features the protagonist Solid Snake. This cover is exceptionally rare, and the CGC census only has two books graded in any condition. A recent upgraded copy of this comic sold for $350. Not only is this cover available, valuable, but the Ashley Wood sketch variant has sold for a high sale of $250 with a recent raw sale of $200. Sorry, Marty. I was asked to nuke him. Ger, 
Bert Herngeif. Irv Hermlinger. Bing Livehanger. Livelink. Bert Herkern. Bert. Bingo Ling fucker. It could it could <laughs> not have been that bad as, as a long of a difficult read it was, man. I tell you. I know. You. I, I I always I mean, tell you people guys it's read along a lot harder. Me. Yeah. Oh. I always tell people it's a lot harder than you think. Um <laughs> So, Metal Gear Solid Sons of Liberty issue number one, uh, retailer incentive CGI from IDW. Um, so, there is a resurgence of uh, video games that are coming out now that don't suck. And that leads to. So, have you guys watched Fallout? Not yet, not yet. Now, did it, they no. only just come out with one episode, or did, no? They dropped them all. Oh, they dropped, no, they nice. dropped them all. It's on yeah. Amazon Prime. Yeah. Evening, like when, when did it drop, Tim? Tim? When did it drop? Uh, Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday. Something. Some, some so something. like one days ago, and you've already watched all six episodes, haven't you? No, no, no. no. I watched three of them because they're like an hour and long. So it's when like, do you, you sleep, know, man? Come on. Uh, so what do you think so far, man? I don't sleep. I'm thumbs up, far. thumbs down. For what? It's a uh, thumbs up so far. And then okay. you got you got Borderlands coming out. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, in the past, I mean, what other, what are the games? Uh, Season two of Dunes is supposed to be coming out too soon. No, we're talking about like based off of video games. Oh, the video know. games. Okay. You know, Super Mario Brothers was good. Uh, Team NT was good. The new one. So you know, it looks like Hollywood is finally making good video game movies. Not like, uh, you know, you know. Go ninja, no go ninja, go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Talk about that or that Street Fighter. 80s, I don't man, care yeah, what yeah. you say. Street Fighter sucked with Van. Cam- it did J- suck. It did Jack suck. Van Damme. That was whack. Another hot take: the original Mortal Kombat, not that great. Not that great. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the I music is that. good, but the fighting is is so so. No but- combat. <laughs> All right, what do we got up next? Oh wow! Yes. This I is love, uh, I have. I am on the board. I have this. You're cover. on the board, man. This yes. is my favorite cover of the night. Look at this one. Nice. All right, man, folks. This is a good one. Next up, we've got Red Sonia, issue number seven, the foil, the red foil, one in twenty, Adam Hughes variant, this originally published in two thousand. Doesn't look like red foil though to me. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. It does. Yeah, now, right. Adam Hughes is one of the most collected and praised cover artists in the comic world. He has amassed an incredible following, and his fan base is filled with collectors that aren't afraid to spend higher amounts on his rare covers. Now, Hughes has had some legendary runs on various titles over the years as well. His runs on Catwoman and Wonder Woman produced a massive amount of incredible covers that are still selling today these runs produce some truly iconic covers that have been homaged more than a few times now another character hughes has portrayed on covers less popular than wonder woman or catwoman is red sonia his work on red sonia has produced some of his best work one of these covers is his cover for red sonia number seven uh from dynamite This cover is the Hughes we all fell in love with. The cover shows tons of attitude and detail, and while overlooked for years on the aftermarket, seems to be finding some interest now. A near mint raw copy sold this week for $80, making it a new all-time high sale for a raw copy. Surprisingly, this 1 in 20 red foil variant sells more than the one in 50 variant. Many of Adam Hughes covers have ballooned in price, but there are still some works from the 2000s that are still out there at an affordable price. If the same thing that happened to Dave Stevens covers happens to Adam Hughes covers, watch out. Some of these books hold the potential to jump up in price considering their current buy-in prices. Uh, <clears throat> Red Sony to number seven, Adam Hughes, uh, Red Foil 120 from 2006. Um, I don't think it will because 
Adam Hughes did a lot more work than um, Dave Stevens. Than did see Dave Stevens. You know what I mean? That's why they're more sought out. They're more uh, sought out, sought for, sought out. For shit. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> sought out. Um, <clears throat> so, um, segue. Um, the people at uh, Dynamite reached out to me and asked me dynamite hey. man dynamite. Yeah, they say hey would you like to interview some of our artists or and writers for our comics on your channel and uh so um you know i'll leave it up to the live chat you guys want me to interview and if so which comic book or creator or writer or artist do you want me to uh interview i haven't done that for a while now but you know what why not you know what i'm saying why not mm-hmm. man it's something different you know just kind of yeah fresh buddy be fresh man it'll be a and it'll be a live interview too so if you have any questions another, another example why the universe is telling you to stay brother you know yeah we'll see about that all right <laughs> get ready for some obscurity yes it is number eight shaker brings you robot men of the lost planet number one by avon published in 1952 This is almost an ironic book to hit the Shakers list. Among all the divisive discussions. Did I say that right? Devices. Divisive Divisive. discussions. Divisive (laughs) discussions over technology and AI. This book is the tragedy of the end of the world at the hands of robots that have gone sentient. The book has an uplifting ending where a small family is able to reclaim some semblance of humanity and begin the end of the robot rule. If the premise wasn't terrifying enough, Gene Fawcett and Mort Lawrence's artwork on the robot design will petrify you. It truly is the thing of nightmares and also the image of a popular children's toy. Depending on the generations you grew up in, you might recognize the toy as Jobo, Panic Pete, or Bug Out Bob. This popular toy hit the markets in 1950, and the resemblance to the robot overlords in this comic is uncanny. Rest assured, the stress relief squeezing toys will not rise up and take over humanity. However... This design took over a fan's wallet as we saw a sale of a CDC 6.5 reach a new record of $1,850. This is twice the value the same grade sold for in 2023. There are only four copies of this grade on the CGC census, with the highest grade on the census reaching 9.0. Whoever owns that 9.0 will be happy to see that the book has had a decent value increase. Yeah, this is crazy and absurd. But from 1952, and you got a 6.5. Yeah. I mean, but there's good. a 9.0 out there from 1952. Someone's got a 9.0 in this. Good lord! But look at those. They look like remember, robot I remember those baby squeezy toys. Remember the they yellow like squeezy little. toys? Yeah. Yeah, ro- they look like robot men babies or, or something like that. It, it looks <laughs> they crazy, were in man. Red diapers, man. <laughs> and this was a toy? Good God. I don't yeah. know about all that. That would spook me out. It was a is it was a stress relief squeezing thing, man. It's it, you squeeze it and like the ears and the eyes pop out on that thing. Uh, okay. It's yellow, it's all yellow. Is, hey, whatever you squeeze is your business, man. All right. Yeah. Robot Man of the Last Planet issue number one from 1952, 1850, and a 6.5. Let's get some more. Some. Oh, there we I go. Think you get a right. chance to get on I board. Love, on yeah. I love these. I love these. Uh, definitely a chance to get on the board. Before I read my final read, shout out to the hundred strong in the live chat. If you're appreciating or if you are enjoying tonight's show, we would appreciate. If you take a moment to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, if you're not already at number nine, we've got Spidey Super Stories issue number 11, originally published in 1975. Do I have to say it? That's the Bronze Age. 
In this day and age, the amount of Spider-Man variants in existence are too many to count. Some generations will grow with the Spider-Verse, never knowing the first variants that emerged in the early years. For example, a significant part of history was the debut of the first Spider-Woman. No, not Jessica Drew. The first Spider-Woman was Valerie, the librarian. A black woman who donned Spidey's costume and lined it with suction cups to impersonate the hero. <laughs> While her role in Spider-Man's mythos was short-lived, it was a significant piece of spider history. Or just regular history. Now, Valerie was one of two black female heroes debuting in 1975 in Marvel Comics. Who can name the other? Chat, come on, chat. The other was none other than the all-powerful, weather-wielding goddess Storm uh. in Giant Size X-Men issue number one. Now, Valerie also took down one of Spidey's main villains by using her acrobats to take down the Vulture. This all takes place in an alternate reality, Earth. 57780. However, we're currently in an era of the multiverse, and we could very well see a return for this forgotten spider variant. Regardless of the future appearance, a fan couldn't resist picking up a CGC 9.6 copy of this book for 500 bucks. This is the highest grade sale to date, with only five books graded. At a 9.6 on the CGC census. Yeah, Jason, I was thinking it's the same thing. I was thinking Misty Knight as well. Um, but yeah, it's Storm. Um, let me see. Somebody uh, rubs comics. Five for nine. Do we? Five for nine. Wow. Do we require proof of life? Dude, I'm a one question mark because I got a 9.8 in the book, but it was actually a, a 10.0 that was featured so i'm gonna drop that little question mark on mine there one all right spidey super stories issue number 11 from <laughs> 1975 from the good old electric company man all right here's your chance to get on the board i should i have this one to listen closely ladies and gentlemen <laughs> this is gonna be a good read for y'all number yeah, 10 shake your bingo you. <laughs> all right I, I gotta laugh at myself for this one man Number 10 brings you X-Men issue number 160, published by Marvel, August 1 in 1982. Ilyana Rasputin, sister of Peter Rasputin, a.k.a. Colossus, this issue marks the first appearance of an adult Ilyana who will later go on to master hell and become magic. This Chris Claremont written issue features art by Brent Anderson, and Bob Wysek, and was released in 1982. Ilyana, or her nom de guerre, Magic, has become a fan favorite and has really been given a lot of attention. Magic appeared in last year's Midnight Suns video game as one of the playable characters. He was also in the teaser trailer for the new epic games Marvel Rivals. Think Overwatch. That recently dropped. The character has already made an on-screen appearance in 2020. New Mutants as portrayed by Anya Taylor-Joy. Most recently, she had a blink and you'll miss it cameo in X-Men 97 when a shapeshifter morphed temporarily took over her likeness. What also makes this book stand out is the juxtaposition between a recent 9.9 oh. .9 and a 9.8 sale. According to the CGC census, there's only one copy of this book in a 9.9 .9 and in a 10.0. This book was graded before the recent CGC 9.8 controversy, making this particular book one of the super rare unicorns. Recently, a 9.8 and a 9.9 .9 were both sold on the same day. The 9.8 sold for 159, while the 9.9 .9 sold for 
$560. That is a difference of $4,401 or a 2,768% increase. Yeah, so if if you didn't watch episode five, um, no, no, no. It was during the Goblin Queen episode, and you see her saying, I don't want to hurt through you, and then she zaps and then she zaps her and becomes like her pawn. Shouldn't you and hit like she... spoiler thing real quick? But shouldn't you have done some, some sort of little spoiler thing? No, man, I'm not spoiling anything. It's just okay. it, she made an appearance. I didn't spoil that everybody died. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so X Men issue 160, uh, 1982, 9.9 for 4,560. I don't know, yeah, I have one, but it's not a 9.9. I don't even think it's no, uh, and I, I, I'm gonna correct the writers of cover price here. Is she didn't take over as the leader of hell, she took over the leader of limbo. Limbo, yeah, Belasco was the uh, you know was in uh part of limbo and then um she took over you know it, there's a great magic mini series oh. so what happens yeah what happens is she's like a young girl and then all of a sudden she goes into limbo and then she comes out like almost an adult like you know she's like a 19 20 year old or something like that and and then she just comes out just a badass you know what i'm saying um, um, I hope you guys left a comment on last uh, week's show or a uh, Tuesday well, show. Yeah, let's start. talk about this, Tim. I mean, People we're getting a hundred comments. I know we got a hundred in the live. Shout out to we the hundred in the live. I'm man. pandering Nobody to the audience. Free again. Shit, man. We, get a, we get a thousand views on the rewind and get a you know a, a lot of thumbs up, which we really appreciate. There's only 34 comments on these videos. On average, 34 comments. I'm sending books to the same people over and over again. As a matter of fact, I shipped, you know, you got, go (laughs) check your IG if you got shipped today because you got your tracking. Yeah. So you'll get a chance when we're going to go and see what's shaking. So you guys uh, drop the link in there so they can leave a comment. (laughs) One person took my advice and they go, you guys suck. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So it doesn't even have to be, yeah, say anything you want. Just, just this is evil guy. Yeah, subscribe <laughs> to the channel. Yeah. Um, let's go over and see uh, what's shaking today, boys and girls. As they do a seamless transition. You don't get the this kind of production quality. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't at all. Broadcast. Barely. Yeah. Barely at barely. all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seamless transition. This is the killing the dead air. I love this. Still killing that. There it is. Seamless. All right, so here we go. See, if you haven't been on their website lately, they, they kind of revamped it um, a lot, actually. You know, here's my trending comics. Um, Rare finds, Daily Shakers. Here's the top 10, runners up, latest news. I mean, God, you know, you get a, a lot of bang for your buck for the price of a McRib. You know what I'm saying? But we're here to see what's shaking. Oh, Okay. Yeah. These are uh, big money. These yeah. is big money, brother. I yeah. stabbed my strange tales. Uh Captain America USA. X-Men number one. Wow, two point five for five grand. That seems rather reasonable to me. Yeah, I have the amazing Spider-Man 14. I think that's the only one I have of I have Damn. <laughs> that first twenty eight hundred for a newsstand. What? Look at that. That's nice. crazy. Nice. I'm have to go. That's back too here. much. Highest known grad. Actually, uh, the highest known value is 5250 back uh last year, December or December of uh, 2015. Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> oh, love this cover. That one. Oh, you love yeah, that cover. Have that one. Oh, Frank Bruner, man. So awesome. Look at that. So dope. I actually own one of those. Still have it. That's a yeah. Uh, uh, so a graded nine point eight sold for fourteen hundred. There is a going to be a um, Doctor Strange three film. Um, it was teased at the end of Doctor Strange number two with uh, Clea. Um, and uh, go check out Emergency Awesome. Great freaking channel. They got like ten million subs or whatever. Uh, and they were breaking down like you know uh, all the stuff for 
uh, X Men, and interesting enough, there's a thing about they did a sh- um, uh, a video about Madam Web and how there were deleted scenes of Peter Parker Spider Man inside the Madam Web movie. Okay, I mean, you know what I mean? But then, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's and different well, how? Of it too. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's I haven't seen the movie and I don't care to, but maybe we'll see it one day. So, um, but yeah, it's very interesting. Go check out Emergency Awesome, man. They're a great channel. Is that some J. Scott Campbell to the right? That is yeah, some J. Is. Scott right there. Yep. Ultimate Look at him. Number one. Peter and uh, Mary both have the same Beautiful Look at that. cover, man. <laughs> Sorry, Laura, but, you know, blondes are cool, but I got a thing for redheads, man. Yes, yes. Yes, mm. yes you and me too, brother. Mm-hmm. Well, um, what the hell is this? What is this? Coverlet? What is that? Godzilla? Godzilla. Godzilla. Yeah, Megalon. 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 Yeah, there we go. It's so, like the just a page. That, is that all they have? That's it. One page. Damn. Very rare, by the way. Get Very rare. Here. First U.S. comic appearance of Godzilla. Maybe they, they probably couldn't it's... find find it, so they just like, uh, yeah. From Cinema Shares International, nineteen seventy six, so it predates is the it... Godzilla Marvel one. Is it just the page, a uh, page in within that book? Well, maybe they couldn't find the cover online. Um, is what I'm thinking for the database, but. Um, Speaking of which, record for the number of times invoked. Wow, Godzilla and and Kong is fucking dope. You have to see it. It is crazy bonkers. There is destruction going around. There's some new kaiju in there. And it's, uh, man, you got to see it on the biggest screen possible. And he's got a robotic arm. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for you, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it goes de- even deeper into the mythos Godzilla that the original movies never did. Um, really? He, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It goes really, really deep. And it, it's cool to see where they're going to go here from now and hopefully it does a good box office but uh you know oh my god what <laughs> yeah i've been pretty busy man yeah you are <laughs> damn you said i'll sleep yeah because i go to movies uh monkey He's man t- tivo does not sleep whatsoever he does not monkey sleep. Man. He went to, he saw monkey man all right monkey man is a must see the action is crazy uh dev patel who would have known i told you i got uh, he i looked him up and he's actually got a black belt in taekwondo and he does all you know and he fights it's like indian john wick with the more mystic kind of overtone to it you, and, you know go ahead, and it's go ahead. and it's produced by one of the guys from key and peel i forgot whichever one the guy that did get out and all the other films but you guys got to peep that out man so um I was you mentioned John Wick and I I don't know if I mentioned on Tuesday I just rewatched John Wick number one and that shit holds up now it is yeah, still it I think it not, well not not time. all these hold up man I'll tell you what don't go fuck check with out man uh, this dog man Universal man, Soldier hard. from Von Dom or some crazy these <laughs> things did not age well no yeah no crazy. he did not brother. <laughs> I won't show the graphic again, but uh, um, go see the first Omen. That was scary as fuck. Was it scary? Was it better than the uh, the original series? No, I mean, um, no. It's called the first. Yeah. So basically, it's it's before it's a prequel to the Omen. Whoa! Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, very. Uh, Tim, can you see the comments on the screen or not? I'm highlighting the comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Planet Arizona said that. Uh, Godzilla Kong blew out its prediction. Good. Ooh, look at this. Tales from the Crypt number 41. Mm, that's precarious. That <laughs> axe is ready right to her head, man. $600 for a raw fine? Uh, dang. Wow. Aw. Teenage romances. How cute. Aw. Gotta be like a 40s book or, or something. 1953. 1953. With a ball player, yeah, he's gonna do her right. 
<laughs> they don't look like teens to me, buddy. You know what I mean? What's going on here? I uh, know. Well, it was fifty, so you know. It was, yeah. I mean, look, you watch the member Grease. <laughs> they didn't look like teens to me either, man. Well, I mean, nowadays you see movies, you're like, God damn, those are not people who should be in high school. No, some grown ass people the, in there. Yeah, especially the eighties movies when they would do these teen movies. They would. They were old. Yeah, like, bre- no like Breakfast Club, like Breakfast, yeah, Breakfast Club, Club. Yeah. sixteen oh candles, you know. <laughs> wow, well, she looked like she was like Witch Tales. Look at that. What is this? Witch Tales number twenty from Harvey Comics. That's Damn. an awesome cover. That is. You get a reflection so, and a skull. Come on. All right, now I got to look at some more covers. You know how? Yeah, let's see. Let's check out the covers. Oh, damn. Yellows and reds, man. Blonde and the red again. Oh, the blonde. Oh, the reds were very popular then, man. Look at the Grim Reaper. Weird yarns of unseen that. terrors. Wow. Bring this shit back. Shit, you know what I mean? All right. Oh, there's the de- straight up the devil. That's straight up Beelzebub or <laughs> Satan. Like old school devil, man. Old yeah. school devil, yeah. Yeah, with the horns of the cape. Actually, uh-huh. that's kind of dope, man. I'm not like I'm not gonna hate on it, man. I love that stuff, man. I really do. All right, boys and girls, right. you've had time. Did we get any more comments, JB? Um, I don't know. We dropped that last link one more time for you. And we will see here if we got any more comments when I try to divide five by nine. No, never mind. It's two. <laughs> We've got 34 comments. No, we got we grabbed no additional comments. Go ahead and sh- are we shared? I can't tell if we're shared. No, you're not. Go share. Go ahead and share. We will pull a winning comment here. You can't win if you don't play. You know, yeah, I know. 34 yep. comments, man. I'll tell you what. I shipped. Uh, I don't want to drop people's names because everyone play, pulls off, uh, off their handle. But check your Instagram for tracking. I shipped. Like yeah, the math packages. doesn't add up, dude. There's we got like 150, 160 thumbs up. We got like you know anywhere. Yeah, from drop a comment in there. You know, like... two thousand views, but only thirty four comments. What's going on? And let's see what the winning comment for tonight is, because we're gonna give away some. I of this hope book. it's that you guys sucked comment. I swear to God, I hope it is. There would be more of those, man. Yeah. Rum roll. Damn. Dang. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Castro, oh. 178. Three. Dang, what a list. Some interesting comics that I never heard of. All right. Yeah. Winning comments. He's in the Jeff. live chat. Look at that. You're there in the live go. chat. Perfect. That's yeah. awesome. That, it's awesome bro. when somebody leaves yeah. a comment and this. is in the live chat. What are the what are you gonna give him, JB? Uh some books from Miss Laura once I dig them out. <laughs> right. You want to show them now or no? No. I'm not ready for that. You're Come not on, a shower? Man. Okay. All right. You're a grower. Show. I got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right, boys and girls. That's it. We've kept you captive for an hour now. Uh Marty, any last words? No, you know, besides you know, besides the uh bingo lingos and stuff, man, I really do enjoy reading, you know, and uh I, I have a great time doing it. Um, and I know when they write, they, uh, they have those tongue twisters in there, right? Just to kind of, just to kind of give it to us every once in a while, keep us humble, if you will. But I, I do enjoy it. Yes, it was good. It was good. You did well, Marty. JB. You crushed that last, last one, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, thanks for having me on tonight. Um, uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week, uh, on Thursday. Um, but we are on Tuesday, so make sure you're on the Tuesday show. I'll probably be on Thursday, but uh, appreciate everybody for stopping by. Make sure you comment after this video. If you're watching this on the Rewind, much appreciated. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and as always, don't forget, we had a good time. There you go. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, we'll see you. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday for the comic book uh, shakers, or excuse me, the comic uh, top 10. Until next time, keep digging in them long boxes. Peace out.
created from the cosmic legends of the universe. universe, 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 universe. Their mission to fight injustice, to right that which is wrong, wrong and wrong. to serve all mankind. TV Oh, that the Lord is up there. Um, what's in the box? 